Apollo Milton Obote was raised from the deeper recesses of Akokoro in a patch district. The son of a chief, Stanley Opeto, he would later charm his way across the hearts of Ugandans as his message gained traction with a common man. A leading road in the fight of self-determination, Oboti returned from Kenya right in time to be amongst those who midwifed Uganda's independence. He came in at a critical moment and trying to balance the political forces at play and the negotiations, the delicate negotiations, which touched on um, trying to get independence for the whole country and the country to move as, a, as one nation. Because if you recall, leading to independence, there were some schisms within the body politic, which at times threatened to um, tear the country. So it took delicate balance, concessions, dealing with other political interests to be able to birth the nation. In Kenya, he had been apprenticed by ideologues Tom Mboya, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, and Anguix Kodek. He appeared quite polished, and his speeches were poetic renditions. Like the proverbial Colossus, he straddled the political landscape of Uganda. Dr. Henry Piote, personal friend and a physician of the late president, recalls Obote loved telling folklore stories during his childhood. These were small, small stories. So after we, they, they are talked, we young, small children would then go and sit wherever we are, try to relate these things. Sometimes we laugh over it, sometimes even you fight, oh, but he didn't say it like that, or, oh, but that is what he said. You know, we, 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 these were the sort of things. On 9th October 1962, Obote as Prime Minister stood tall on the hallowed Kololo independence grounds as the British government handed over power. I, Apollo Milton Obote, do swear that I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II her heirs and successors according to law, and that I will support and uphold the constitution of Uganda as by law established. His presence was a culmination of a political alliance with the Kabaka Yeka party led by Edward Mutesa, the Kabaka of Uganda. However, four years later, this alliance would rupture. Obote sent his point man in the army, Idi Amin, to the Lubiri. As a result, Kabaka Mutesa fled to exile where he died in London in 1969. Once respected, Obote became a loth figure here in Uganda. However, his physician says Obote regrets what happened at the Lubiri. It was a very sad moment for me, and he always used to say, he had only just he, he wished, I mean, had not gone there, but he was the only man at the, at the moment to go, and if he did not send him also, he would have been blamed. In 1971, Idi Amin overthrew him while he was in Singapore attending a Commonwealth summit. History would repeat itself in 1985 during the Obote II regime after the army led by Baziri Olaro Kero overthrew him. Dr. Opiote, who was with Obote as the coup unfolded, recalls these events. Clear to him, he said, whom am I fighting? I'm fighting Ugandans. Blood in my hand. No, forget it. If they want to kill me, I'm here. Because at that time he had refused the issue of going out to say, no, let them come and kill me. He also reveals that General Tito Kelo, who became president after Bote was ousted, was not behind the coup, but rather it was a senior clergyman. Lotua, at the time of the coup, because of that disagreement, he was out, he left the country, was in Sudan. They brought him afterwards. So it was Basilio who confused, even many actually who fought, did not know that they were overthrowing their own government. They were being told that NRA has come. Obote alongside his friend Dr. Piote fled to exile in Zambia. On 9th October 1962, Apollo Milton Obote entered the annals of history when he received the instruments of power from the British government. Uganda became a sovereign. It is in this humble hamlet of Akokoro where Obote's remarkable political journey began. His friends and peers recall that it's where he honed his debating and oratory skills. However, a day after Uganda's 43rd independence anniversary, Obote breathed his last.
he was returned home and given a decent send-off here at his birthplace in Akoko. Emmanuel Mtaizwa, NTV.